Hi guys. In this video, we're going to be describing potential difference in series circuits. Then we'll look at current in series circuits, resistance in series circuits, an example of a series circuit, and finally, a summary. OK, let's talk about the details of potential differences in series circuits. Firstly, what happens when we take identical cells and we connect them in series? For example, imagine we had a 2 volt cell and we connected three such cells together. Then what happens is the following. As long as the cells are connected with positive to negative terminals in contact, the total potential difference of the power supply is just the sum of the individual cell potential differences. Let's look at our example. By positive to negative terminals in contact, we just mean that the negative terminal of one of the cells sees the positive terminal of the cell next to it then in this case, the total potential difference is just the sum of the individual potential differences of each of the cells. So that's 2 plus 2 plus 2, which equals 6. So we've talked about what happens to cells in series, but what happens once we fix this potential difference, and we want to know what happens to components that are connected in series? Well, the total power supply potential difference is then shared across the other components in the circuit. Imagine we had a 5 volt power supply. Then by the potential difference being shared across the other components, what we mean is that together, the drop across the light bulb and the motor must equal the whole 5 volts of the power supply. Therefore, the drop across the motor must be 2 volts. We can understand a little bit better why the total drop across the light bulb and the motor together needed to be the full 5 volts in an analogy where we compare the potential difference with height differences above the ground. Let's imagine that a ladder takes us to a certain height. Let's say, for example, 5 metres to the top of the slide. Then this ladder is like the 5 volt battery. The ladder takes us up to 5 metres. The cell took us up to 5 volts. Now let's imagine that we start at the top of the slide and then we slide down the first steep part that takes us down two meters. We can imagine this steep part of the slide like one of the components in the circuit that takes the voltage down by two volts. But then if I was to tell you that there was only going to be one more steep descent and that this descent had to take us back down to the ground level, then you'd know how steep this descent was. We started at five meters in the air and then we went down two meters, so we must go down another three meters to get back to zero. Let's compare this idea with the circuit that we started with. We start with the battery, which brought us up to 5 volts. Then if we go through the first component, and it brings us down by 2 volts, and we know we need to get back down to 0, then the motor must have a drop of 3 volts. The formula is that V total, that is the total potential difference in the circuit, is equal to the sum of each of the individual potential drops in the circuit. A final fact worth knowing is that two identical components in a series circuit will have identical potential differences across them. Let's talk about the current in series circuits. It turns out that the current in a series circuit is the same at all points in the circuit. If we imagine the current going round in this direction, and I label the currents, for example, I1 and I2, then because the current is the same at all points, we can write down a useful relationship, which is that I1 is equal to I2. So we have this useful fact about the current, but how can we actually determine the current flowing through the circuit? we use the formula V equals IR. But what do the symbols in V equals IR mean? Well, we know that I is the current, and then V is the potential difference, so we need to know the potential difference. And R is the total resistance of the circuit. But how do we find the total resistance of the circuit? So what do we mean by the total resistance of a circuit? Well, if we have a circuit containing a single resistor and a cell, and then we add in another resistor in series, 
what happens? So here was our first resistor, and now we imagine that in addition to this resistor, we have another one connected in series. Well, the first thing that we can say is that when the new resistor is added, the potential difference across each of the resistors is actually lower than the potential difference was across the resistor initially. If we imagine, for example, that the cells on the left produce a potential difference of 10 volts between them, then the potential drop across the resistor would be 10 volts. If we now consider the circuit on the right hand side, where we still have a potential difference of 10 volts in the whole circuit, this circuit has two resistors of the same resistance, and that means that they're going to share the potential difference drop across them equally. Therefore, the potential difference across each of them is 5 volts. So we've seen that when we add another resistor in series, the potential difference across each resistor decreases. We also know that the current through the resistor will reduce as the potential difference across it has reduced. We can see this from the equation V equals IR. In both cases, we've been talking about the same resistor. So we have the same letter R for resistance. But compared to the first circuit, in the second circuit, the potential difference across the resistor has gone down. But looking at our equation, this means that if R is constant, then the current must also have gone down. The next thing that we can say is that we know that the current should be the same throughout the circuit. So if the current has gone down in one place, the current has everywhere reduced. But now let's think about the circuit as a whole. We know that for the circuit as a whole, it's actually the voltage which stays constant. Because the voltage, or the potential difference, is being produced by the cells or batteries, and in both cases, they just produce 10 volts. But if the voltage has, or the potential difference has stayed the same each time, and the current has gone down in the circuit, then the resistance must have gone up. So the overall effect of bringing another resistor in in series has been that the resistance of the circuit has increased. The equivalent resistance, or total circuit resistance, is actually equal to the sum of the individual component resistances. So if we have a resistor of 5 ohms in series with another resistor of 5 ohms, then the total resistance would be 5 plus 5, or 10 ohms. Let's have a go at an example of a series circuit now. For the circuit below, we're going to be challenged to find the readings on the ammeter and the voltmeter. If we want to try and find the current, or the reading on this ammeter, then we need to use V equals IR using the voltage or the potential difference for the total circuit and the resistance for the total circuit. So the first thing we need to do is actually find the resistance of the whole circuit. We said on the previous slide that if we have resistors connected in series, like these three resistors here, then their resistances add. So the total resistance is 5 plus 10 plus 2 ohms. And that is equal to 17 ohms. Our next step is going to be to find this reading on the ammeter, or the current flowing through the circuit. To find the current flowing through the circuit, we need to use the voltage of the whole circuit, and the resistance of the whole circuit, and the formula V equals IR. But our challenge has been to find the current, which is the letter I. So we need to rearrange this equation for I. And we do this by dividing both sides by R. If we do this, we get that I is equal to V over R. Now we know that the total potential difference in the circuit was 9 volts, and the total resistance was 17 ohms. So I is equal to 9 volts divided by 17 ohms. So we have been successful in finding the current or the reading on the ammeter but we were also asked to find the reading on the voltmeter, which is the potential difference across the 5 ohm resistor. But we know that the potential difference across a resistor is given by V equals IR. 
Well, this time the resistance is the resistance of our resistor, which is 5 ohms. And we know that the current is equal to 9 over 17 amps. So altogether, V is equal to 9 divided by 17 and then times 5, which in my calculator is equal to 2.6 volts. Therefore, the reading on the voltmeter was 2.6 volts. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing GCSE physics and combined science resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the Snap Provide smiley face and together let's make physics at GCSE a walk in the park.